Okay, so hopefully you took a picture of the Soul 45 you put it, before you put it on your camera so you can see the difference between your shots with your Sweet 50. Let's talk about what makes the Soul 45 um, one of my favorites and so much fun to use. All right, so we did a lot of experiments with Aperture with the Sweet 50. The Soul 45 has a fixed f3.5. That's it. That's all you've got, which is a pretty good size sweet spot of focus for flower photography. Um, not having to worry about aperture can be a little freeing. It's also really tiny and really light for hand holding. Um, it does bend, not quite as much as your sweets. It sort of bends on the third. And if you don't want to bend it, you just rotate that ring to the left and it locks it if you want that centered focus, okay? So you've got a sweet spot in there, and again, when you're bending, you're moving that sweet spot toward your subject, toward where you want to draw the eye. The other thing, um, the minimum focus distance is 14 inches. No, there's two soles, right? There, thank you. There's the sole 45. For micro four-thirds cameras, there's a sole 22, and the minimum focus distance on that is three and a half inches away, which is pretty, pretty darn sweet. Um, yeah, but for... Um, for your, the other cameras, it's everyone here has a Soul 45. 45. So, yeah, but that's the difference. You wouldn't buy that if you don't have a Micro Four Thirds camera. It's yeah. not an option, it's just for a different kind of, okay. of camera. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's a, the coolest thing about this is that it has a set of these two little blades in the center that you can pull in front of the lens. At any angle, you can change the angle, or you could have just one at the top or one at the bottom. You know, the, you can get really creative here. What that does is creates a texture in your background, not on your subject, in your background. So in camera, you're creating a texture, okay? It can, with flowers, sometimes be a little bit too busy, So, but you don't have to use them. If you're, you know, if they're, what you want is something in the background that has um, a lot of detail to it, a lot of lines, and you choose the angle to match those lines. Let's say you have a lot of stems going like this, then choose the angle of your blades to sort of mimic that, to fill that background with a pattern. Or you could just have it in the foreground if you only left the blade at the bottom and pushed the one at the top off. If you push both blades out of the way, this lens has the most soft, gentle blur that I've seen in any lens, baby. I'm madly in love with it. It's just, there's something different about it, different than any of the others. So I want you to experiment with the blades and without. Try the same subject with the blades and without, and you'll get a feel for it. Um, I don't use the blades for everything, but when I want to add that texture, it's just an unbelievable look, okay? So because you want to include some background for that soft blur and for the effect of the blades to show, <laughs> Your minimum focus distance is 14 inches. So again, you're looking for that separation, remember? Because you want the distance, you want the background blur. Um, focus on a subject that's going to have a lot in the background to take on that texture. One of my very favorite shots with the sole is um, with um, two fours stacked to get really close of a rose. And, um, and remember, when you add macro, you reduce depth of field. So just, just a little bit in focus. So. It's, um, don't feel limited to including background. We can give you another macro adapter and let you get even closer. So you're gonna try, you guys can bend now. I'm letting y'all let you bend. Um, you know, even if you're feeling intimidated by bending, go back to just lock that. Then you don't have to worry about it. It's gonna stay right in the middle, but unlock it. You know, do your bends, get your composition, bend toward the area and focus and that you want and focus and Refine your focus. There's your focus. All right, go shoot. Blades, no blades. Feel free to bend. Background, no background. <laughs> First thoughts with this? It looks like a stained glass window. It does. It does. And you see how it's only in the background. Right. Look at it. Looks that looks like rain. You're right. It looks like you created rain. It does, doesn't it? That was a really good direction, I think. Thank you. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> in camera. <laughs> love. <laughs> I go, am too lazy to ever use Photoshop, so everything oh. I do is just straight out of camera. Well, this is I mean, ideal. I love Photoshop. Photoshop is fun, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time. And the right. beauty of lens babies is that sometimes they need absolutely nothing, my right. lens baby photos. And that gives me more time to go make photos. That's my thought. I'm, I'm I would rather woman. be out there, right? Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Good. I think, I I think you've got, definitely got the hang of it, and I love that Thank rain you. look. So I know you do a lot of textures. Do you ever just use, like that to make a texture? If you look or? in my texture collection, now that you, you could probably recognize it, yes. 
Yes, I have. Just totally defocus. Mm -hmm. It's something to think about to add to your texture collection. Yep. Totally defocus, not have a subject, and, um, and make a texture to print out. Oh, that's cool. It's kind of trippy. It is. <laughs> it really is. It's not the obvious dahlia either. You no. Know, I mean, they're no. all. Cool, no, when, but because yeah. some of them are so massive, this one's just different. Mm -hmm. This is the separation, and that one petal is what draws me to it.